I have never done a reading vlog before. I have attempted to and they just like never really stick with it, partly because I'm not great at vlogging either. Um, this is actually an ongoing theme in the vlogs that I have never posted, um, just how bad I am at vlogging and it's because usually I don't have really that much to film um, or also I'm just lazy about filming. Um, but I am now 20% into chemistry and I am overcome with feeling already. Like chemistry is a book I have been meaning to get to for a while, but also haven't been able to read in large part because like I have not had the distance that I needed between me and grad school to really like be able to read a book that is so much about doing a PhD in a lab science. And now that I'm 20% of the way through this book, I think that was the right call. Chemistry, for those of you who are not familiar, is about a chemistry PhD student um, who's kind of going through that crisis. That crisis that is like so much a part of grad school, but also is tied to a lot of things that she needs to deal with in her own life, um, in terms of her mental health, her relationship, a lot of stuff. One of the things that I think has been really striking to me about chemistry, like I am very much, the things that are resonating with this book are very much about, you know, the, this character's PhD journey. But I've seen a lot of people talk about this, co this book as something that's really resonated with them, even if they ne haven't necessarily also been on their own PhD journey and, and like I think a lot of that is probably going to become apparent to me over the course of this book. There's a lot about being a first generation American, there's a lot about mental health, about relationships, about being a woman like in this day and age and so I see why this book has been like so popular and like I said I'm only 20% of the way through this book. This is a small book and yet I feel like I have highlighted half of it. Um, so here are some moments that so far have really struck me. Um, so this is one scene. Uh, it's actually the scene that I posted to my IG stories where I was just like, this is, oh my god, like I feel like I've lived this. Um, the PhD advisor visits my desk, sits down, brings his hands together and asks, where do you see your project going in five years? Five years, I say in disbelief. I would hope to be graduated by then and in the real world with a job. I see, he says, perhaps then it is time to start a new project one that is more within your capabilities. I did not have that exact conversation with my advisor. My advisor was very supportive as I like say all the time, but like that <laughs> that conversation about time and about graduating and about what is realistic in terms of doing your research. Ugh. Oh, here's another one. There comes a point in the doctorate where you just have to finish no matter what, which is very true. That's, that's a thing they don't tell you. It seems like there's gonna be a clear ending point, but for most of us, you graduate because you're just like, well, I gotta do it. Like, it's gotta happen at some point. It might as well be this point. This is another one that I love. So at one point, the, um, the main character is explaining what it means to be working in her field of research. She works in synthetic chemistry. The way I have explained it is through Legos. The chemistry that I do involves putting many Legos together and having another Lego come out. The Legos are molecules, but unlike real Legos, I cannot see them or touch them. Uh, a few paragraphs later, this comes back um, where uh, she's talking to her friend about work and her friend says, well, when I was in Orgo Lab, I remember it being fine. Don't Legos come with a manual? And this makes me a little mad. Once I finish writing it, they will hand me a PhD. Like, ugh, that's such, like, it's so true. Like, it seems like, the, the thing with science, with working in lab science, is like, all the ways that we learn science, we learn science doing labs, like you, you get like a manual that tells you how to run an experiment and then tells you what your data is supposed to look like and then tells you how to analyze your data and then tells you why your data might not look the way it's supposed to look like. And that is so far from the actual experience of working in a lab and doing an actual experiment. Like I understand why the labs that you do in your lab classes are set up that way. They don't actually prepare you for the reality of doing an experiment, which is like you come up with the way that you're gonna do an experiment 
you do it, it probably doesn't work. So then you go through all of the things that you did, try to like figure out what might have gone wrong, fix that one thing, and then pray, do the experiment again. It probably still won't work. So then you find another thing and you change that. And the thing is you, ha you have to change one thing at a time. You're not allowed to just change everything at once because that's not good science. Like you can't change everything at once because then you won't know what you actually did wrong. So it's just like this interminable process to apparently write a fucking Lego manual. There's another moment too. She says, you must love chemistry unconditionally, but all I can think is how I am not up for the task. And like, <laughs> Yeah, that's what it feels like because I've been around scientists my entire life. I have grown up with scientists. I've like seen people who, who love science in that unconditional way. And I got to a point where I realized I didn't love science unconditionally. I didn't like having to love science on science's terms where I was gonna have to construct my life around my experiments, where I was going to be obsessing over my experiments like all the time, where I was gonna be assessing myself in terms of how my experiments were going. And I don't think that you actually have to be that way to do science, but that's what it felt like at the times when I felt most like insecure about whether or not I was a good scientist. Another like detail that like resonates too much, um, the, the main character, she has this boyfriend um, who is also a PhD student and he is frustratingly sane and happy with his experience, um, which weirdly <laughs> overlaps, uh, which weirdly parallels the, the difference between my experience with like academia and my husband's. At the point that I'm at, the, the main character has already kind of had her breakdown. She has had a point in her lab where she's just like, fuck all these beakers and she just throws them on the fucking ground, which I don't know anyone who's done that, but I completely understand that impulse. Like when she does that, it's like this moment that is kind of small in the book. Like the way the book is written, it, like the, the book is written in a very understated way. Sentences are very short um, and events are like, they, they kind of happen to the main character, which is part of, I think, the point of the book. And so when, when she has this breakdown, the book isn't building up to it. It's actually happening very early in the book and there's not like a clear precipitating event. It's just a thing that like, she just kind of, does and it has a huge impact on her life but it's all very like understated in how it's written and i really like that quality to it because like i it feels it feels real all of that feeling is just from the first 20 percent of this book and so i like i don't know what i'm gonna do with this this is this is the ad now on my kindle um that's come up now that my kindle has fallen asleep um it's for susan stroker securing kate to save a seal, she'll risk her life. To save her life, he'll risk everything. Um, don't really know what that means. Probably not gonna read it, um, but maybe I will. Maybe I'm gonna get to the end of chemistry and I'm just gonna be like, oh, for fuck's sake, while I'm here, because I'm just rambling at this point. Um, I'm reading chemistry, but I'm also listening to Gia Tolentino's um, Trick Mirror on audiobook, and that has also been super fascinating. Um, and it's kind of interesting to like listen to be listening to that book while also reading chemistry because there's kind of not an overlap like they're not about the same things at all at least so far the essays that um, Gia Tolentino has been writing or that I've been listening to so far are mostly about like performance and identity um, but actually I think that does overlap with chemistry in a way uh, in particular I think so far the the main character is like very caught up kind of even if she doesn't seem to completely know it in how she's performing her identity as a scientist and as a girlfriend where she's not quite sure what it is that she's looking for out of those things beyond doing them. She doesn't kind of know how to experience the thing, she knows how to act the thing. Um, so yeah, that's like a just a connection that I'm just kind of pulling out of my ass, but that I think is kind of there. Um, 
and maybe, yeah, is the thing that resonates. And maybe I'm pulling that out of my ass because that is the thing that I experienced. That's a lot of the imposter syndrome that I think people talk about with grad school is that feeling like of, I'm not supposed to be here. Someone's gonna find me out. And, and so you get really caught up in like, do people at least see me as a scientist? Um, which isn't a real thing. Like if you're doing the science and you're doing it, like that's, that's the scientist. That makes you a scientist. That's insightful. This is why I, I, I for one, don't have my own book or series of essays. <laughs> This is pretty innocuous um, and is really something that says more about me being bad at physics. Um, but there's this line um, that I just read. Reflection is the easiest property of light to explain. The front side of a spoon is a concave mirror. The back side is a convex one. In the book, I, I think this is going to build to something about her reflection. For me, this takes me back to my qualifying exams um, from my first year of grad school. So um, different programs do their quals differently. The way ours works is that there are three faculty and it's basically just an oral exam. Um, so at the time that I did them, there were three sections. Um, there was, the first section was about like molecular biology, roughly. The second section was about physiology. And the third section was a topic related to your research. And it's what's hard about it is that it's not standardized. Everybody has a different committee and it's really just up to the professors to decide what they want to ask. Like they just can kind of go on a whim and then take it anywhere you want. they want. And there's not really good oversight um, in how they do that. It's just overall, there's a lot of things that are sort of annoying in my opinion about quals. Um, I could go on a whole rant about that. Um, and you'll see why, because I have a specific personal grievance. And then one of the people on my committee was actually kind of a big deal in immunology. Like he's involved in like some pretty cool stuff that like kind of is the foundation of a lot of what we know about um, the immune system now. So when I saw him on my committee, I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, but it was also a little bit hard because he hasn't really taught at the school in a long time. Like he was an emeritus professor. Like there really was no good way for me to sort of like anticipate what he was going to ask. Um, so I like he was the first section so he was my professor like quizzing me f on molecular biology um and I thought it started out fine like his questions were a little bit weird I think he was sort of leaning towards like brain twister kind of questions but for the most part I thought I answered them okay like he got mad at me for not knowing like two to the ten off the top of my head I was kind of like okay I guess and at one point he made a comment about like how there was something that I should have known just based on the undergrad I went to which I thought was like a little bit like unnecessary it was like very weird and judgy because it's not like he knew my undergrad syllabus right like it was there were some weird things there but the reason like the thing that that was really frustrating was the last question he asked me again remember the section is about molecular biology he's supposed to be asking me about like DNA and cells and that's kind of like what it's been for the most part up until this point. The last question, he asks me, why is it that when you look into a spoon, your reflection is, uh, is flipped upside down and not left to right? And I was just like, like, what does this have to do with anything that we've been talking about? What does this have to do with molecular biology? Very loosely, the connection is about chirality. Like if you know anything about chirality, I think that's what he decided was like the justification for answering this question. And so I told like other faculty and other students later, like he asked me a question about like, you know, my reflection in a spoon and people were like, what like what does that have to do with this? Because like, yeah, like what does it have to do with this? And this is kind of the problem with Quals, like, again, it's hard to standardize. The professors just sort of like say what they want. It's a lot of people call it academic hazing and I kind of believe it. I have a lot of strong feelings and in our program, they actually did make a lot of changes to quals over the years and I think it's gotten better. Um, they've done some things to make it more useful for students, I think, hopefully, um, and to make it less of this like weird rite of passage. Um, so part of the reason why I got mad 
And because I actually ended up failing his section. Personally, I think I should have failed the third section of my quals. And the reason why I think I should have failed that section is like by that point, like my brain had just fully shut down and I forgot how to do this really super basic integration, like a simple math thing that just like total, total brain fart, could not do it. It was so embarrassing. Um, and so like I assumed that if I was gonna fail a section, that that was gonna be the section I failed. And I remember my um, my husband, my boyfriend at the time, we were about to leave for a trip for Iceland and I found out that I failed the first, first section of my quals right before we left. And I was just like, well, I don't know why. Like, is it just because of the spoon? Like I talked, like one other person um, in my class, one of my friends, she had had the same professor um, give her first section. He asked her the exact same questions. It seemed like we had answered with relatively like the same level of knowledge and somehow I was the one who failed. It was very confusing and like I was so irritated. It ended up not mattering. So I, I mean, I did fail that section, but basically I ended up having just to retake it later in the summer. Um, and it was with two other professors who asked questions that were actually relevant to the topic at hand. Um, so I ended up passing it, obviously ended up continuing with grad school. Um, but it was just one of those things where I was like, this is so, like that was one of my first early experiences in grad school of just like, wow, this is weird. Like, and it doesn't make sense. Like quals don't make sense. So yeah, I, I made it like five pages today and I was already <laughs> like, well, <laughs> I'm upset now. So I'm on a walk right now listening to um, Gia Tolentino's uh, Trick Mirror. And uh, I'm listening to the essay that's about athleisure um, and like optimization and bar, uh, which is a fun thing to be listening to when you are on a walk. Um, and it made me realize something about chemistry, which is that I don't think the character, the main character ever really talks about her appearance. And it's kind of striking in a book that's very much about like a young woman's like anxieties and insecurities that that's not an element um, which is just something I thought was interesting and also kind of find refreshing in a way because it is very different compared to a lot of books on the same subject. So something I like mentioned um, earlier uh, was that something that kind of surprised me and that I thought was really interesting was um, when the main character, she, she has this breakdown in her lab and I thought it was interesting because there's not a lot of build up to that, to that moment or it doesn't, it doesn't manifest as like, as vividly as I would have usually expected to based on like, other books that I've read. And that was something that I, I I liked about it. I thought there was something really like, really understated and impactful about that choice. Um, and, and kind of related to that, something that I find interesting is a lot of times um, that kind of breakdown is what the book is what a book is usually building up to. I don't think that's the case in this book. Like the breakdown is part of like the initial ascent, descent or something, I don't know, like the initial trajectory of the character and what it's really building to is her boyfriend, Eric, leaving. Like everything in her life is clearly kind of unraveling in a way, but it's really, this is, seems like the tur like the big turning point that the unraveling is really centered around, not like the grad school, not her relationship with her parents. Those are all the things that are building up. And then this is, the real point, like that the book is literally divided by. There's also a lot of stuff with her relationship with Eric, as well as her relationship with her parents, um, that I'm sure is part of why this book has resonated with so many people that I've talked to. Part of the journey of reading this book has been like being like, oh, this is why 
why so many people love this book so much and why so many people I know have said that like they saw so much of their own experience or they related so much to the this book. I think a lot of that is also related to the way that the, the main character's voice is constructed, um, the way that it is very simple and direct. It's distinctive in a way that's like really specific, like it's specific to this character, but also has sort of a... I don't know, there's something that's so unfrilly about it that even if you don't talk like that, even if that's like not the way you think, I think it's easier to like place your own experiences like kind of in the gaps between the sentences, if that makes sense. This, the sweet, the sweet, the sheen of sweat on my face um, is because all of a sudden we got a crap ton of uh, sunshine on our back patio. While I was walking, I mentioned I was listening to Gia Tolentino's um, essays again, the trick mirror essays. Um, so I was listening to like the athleisure, uh, kale bar, like opti optimizing the modern woman kind of essay um which is about which like gets a lot into kind of beauty ideals when i was listening to that s that essay um up until that point chemistry the main character in chemistry had rarely ever talked about her looks it is now actually coming up um let's see if i can find the quote uh, my mother is not dumb she knows beauty is not everlasting she tells me often you are not beautiful do not think yourself beautiful and i'm angry at her for a long time it is a double-edged sword there's another point where her friend is dealing with um, finding out that her husband um, has been having an affair with a younger secretary and she says secretly I'm envious I want it all to be smart and beautiful physically beautiful it is vain I know but that is what I want and so it's interesting to me that that's something that hasn't been so prominent in this book and it's like now coming up Yeah, that was really good. I like I definitely 100% see why so many people love this book and I like I went into this vlog really thinking of it as like a book that was going to be mostly about the PhD thing. Um, that was kind of the part that I had heard the most about. Um, but that's clearly like that's a part of this book but it's like such a small part compared to so much of the other stuff about her family um, and especially like towards the second half of the book it becomes so much more about like marriage and all of this stuff that she's been carrying um, from from the relationship that her parents had. I really loved how this book approached like how hard it is to talk about like family stuff um, when your family stuff is rooted in a completely different culture from like what the people around you understand as like typical family things. Um, that's a big thing for the main character especially in how she's talking to her shrink um, as well as to Eric like that's the thing that they don't really kind of get because the way that like American like the typical American like family works is very different from you know families that might be from other cultures um in this case a Chinese family I've experienced this coming from an Indian family and when you're here and you grow up here you're the weird one right like you're you're the weird one both at home because you're comparing your family to like what everyone else is around you doing and then when you're not with your family you're still the weird one because like you still feel protective of your family and you like understand their motivations far more and like that's the thing that you like that's the only thing you know um right like that's like my experience with my family is my only understanding of what it means to have a family same as everybody else there's a really great line she's talking about how like early on she's talking about how like at some point um in her relationship she was talking to eric um when they were still dating and she says something about how like um, I'm an only child and he's like oh I'm an only child too we have that in common and she's like yeah but I'm the only child of immigrant parents and he's like what's the difference <laughs> I just love that because it's so yeah it's it's hard like 
obviously you don't want to generalize but I get it I get it completely because what I see in terms when I talk to my friends um, who are also coming from South Asian families uh, there's a lot that we're kind of like processing now with my friends I call it like the brown girl crisis of like now that we're in our 20s 30s we're like processing how our families raised us um, against like what it is we actually like want um, and it's not necessarily a thing that's like wrong with our families like that's something that's really hard and it's something I think a lot of us get defensive about it's really something something more about how we kind of start to internalize things and frame our own priorities um, against what we think our family wants and it takes different things for us to get, like, get through that I like kind of came through that with my own like better understanding of what it is my my family wants for me and it was something that really worked out well for me in terms I feel like I understood my family better and understood that what they want and what I want are not actually at odds with each other um but it's it's hard and it doesn't always resolve itself so easily and I think when you're an only child there's always there's already the sense of like oh shit like I'm the only like I'm the only one who's gonna get it right or wrong for my parents like my parents did not make a backup plan for me like I am plan A B C through Z like all of those plans are just me and that's something that I think feels very only child and also feels very much like being yeah the only child of immigrants and so I really <laughs> loved that line. I'm outside and it's super sunny but it's really nice out here so I'm gonna do this anyway I also like burn some stuff on the stove so like I'm venting the house so it's like super like noisy and smelly right now um, so that's why I'm out here um, because I can be I'm gonna like wrap this up like this whole vlog thing now because I feel like I could literally just start like an Instagram account like or like a actually just do a daily vlog that's just like what did chemistry make me think of today but it's probably not a good idea to um, but I wanted to do like one last kind of like I don't know wrap up thought or whatever um, because yesterday uh, my husband and I we ended up getting in a whole conversation about chemistry we he has not read the book but it ended up being a really really fascinating conversation and I'm not I'm gonna be frustrating I'm gonna like mention this conversation but I'm not gonna say anything too detailed about it because it touches on a lot of like personal stuff like our families our family friends you know like when you're talking to like someone you're close to and conversations get messy like that's what that conversation was so like I'm not gonna broadcast that for the internet so I had like friends who lent me this book and they they were like you're gonna read this and we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk about it one day and I was like again like you know this was the last year of my PhD and I was like I can't like I just can't read this book right now which again 100% the right choice like I, I couldn't I would have been like like thinking about like now all the ways that it's intersecting with my neuroses is, is like a lot thinking about how it would have done done all that then is just like too much but yeah it is a book that I think like lends itself not just to thinking about it but like also to like kind of conversing or at least that's my experience of it um and yesterday my husband and I we were talking about it in the context of our like differing experiences as the children of immigrants um so this is something that we've like shared in common like it's something that is like really I think a part of our relationship is that we we are both born of immigrants um which is my way of covering up for the fact that I never know if you're supposed to call yourself a first or second gen American um I always call myself a first gen American but anyways to avoid getting into that debate I'm gonna say that we we're born of immigrants because it sounds very important so he, his parents came here from Hong Kong um while they were in college my parents came here from India um, after they finished their PhDs um, or actually they came here first they went to the UK um, my dad did a second PhD because he is that kind of person and then he they moved out here um, and so there's been a lot that like our families have shared in common but um, there are differences in terms of our backgrounds and stuff that have given like I think given us very different experiences in terms of how we kind of deal with expectation or kind of what we think of as the expectations I think a, a big part of this book is um, the main character talking about like her feeling that she needs to do better than her parents but how is she going to do better than her parents when they've like when her dad has achieved so much like her, the thing she says is like I have to go to the moon like that's what I have to do to be able to like live up to the dream that my parents came here for 
And that kind of, that sense of expectation, I think that's something, my feeling is that that's something that a lot of kids who are born of immigrants, that's something that a lot of us experience, that like our parents made this huge, immense decision to move to like a completely different country, um, not just to like make a better life for themselves, but also, you know, whether or not we were born, <laughs> like, but also like for us, like we might not have been like a real, Thing even in their lives but that's like a part of their decision is that like they want to like raise their future offspring in a in a new country um, and that's like a really intense decision to make and that that's something that a lot of I think a lot of kids who grow up um, with immigrant parents, they internalize that expectation in different ways. And some of that might be, you know, due to the parents, some of that might be due to what their parents are doing, like what kind of careers they have. Some of that might be the community that they're raised in around their parents. Like if you're raised with, in my case, like a lot of other Indian parents around you, there's like something in the community that can create a sense of expectation, um, especially if you're surrounded by a lot of kids who are your age. I know a lot of us felt like we were compared to each each other um, whether or not that's fair <laughs> is another question um, but yeah there's there's just there's a lot of that and it was interesting for my husband and me to kind of parse that out in terms of why our experiences of that were very different even if they're rooted in the really similar way uh, just yeah I don't know Things like this are so complicated. A thing I liked about the book is that it, it ends on such an ambiguous note, which used to be a thing I hate, but now I'm kind of loving it. At least in the context of this book, I really love it because I don't think that this should be, a, I don't think this book is about easy questions or easy answers. I think it's about how muddied all of these things are and how complicated they are. There's a lot of science woven through this book obviously and I love that but like I think it's it's setting up this clear dichotomy between this the easy answers I mean easy is like obviously getting to the answers are, is not easy but the idea of a concrete answer is easy compared to like the messiness of actual relationships whether they're like you know being a child whether they're being a friend you know a girlfriend a potential wife like all of these things are so much messier and I think that's what I like so much about this book is that it doesn't end on a clear answer it just ends on a clear intent and that's something that for the main character is a huge deal so yeah I'm getting super sweaty now so I think I'm gonna head back in because I need to film some more stuff um, for other videos but yeah thank you guys for joining me for this like long meandering meandering tour through chemistry I hope this was fun I hope this format was fun I might do it more in the future um, do some more kind of reading vloggy kind of stuff like this I'm sure other books that I read won't be nearly as neuroses related or whatever. I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing a review. Should I do a review? I think I'm gonna link to a few videos from my Not My Thesis series down below. For those of you guys who might be new to my channel, Not My Thesis um, was actually a series that I did like while I was finishing up my PhD program um, and a little bit after as well and it was just kind of talking about my experiences with grad school, talking about things in academia. It's something I've thought about doing um, is like a, a PhD postmortem video where I kind of run down like now that it's been more than a year since I finished my grad school thing <laughs> that part of my life I'm kind of running down some of my thoughts about having done a PhD um, now that I'm very much not in academia anymore and now like working in science writing um, yeah so just running through my thoughts on on having done a PhD from the other side I guess and like kind of talking about whether or not it was worth it um, so if you guys want to see something like that let me know let me know what kind of questions you would have for that um, and I will hopefully kind of film one of those soon because I do kind of want to like put a an end cap to not my thesis I feel like right now it's sort of just like ended very abruptly but not really like I never really put a formal end to it so I think I'm going to do a PhD postmortem for that and then maybe call that series to an end um so yeah thank you guys for watching and bye